Insulin is a growth-promoting hormone. Insulin is produced by the body in response to a high glucose load that enters the bloodstream, right? It takes the, blood, the glucose out of the blood by promoting fat storage. It's a fat-storing hormone, and, it's, and it promotes angiogenesis. Do you know what angiogenesis means? Do you guys know? Right. The first book of the Bible? No, that's not it. <laughs> right, angiogenesis means to promote the growth of new blood vessels. And, and we can't grow fat on our body, and we can't become overweight unless we have angiogenesis promotion going on to promote new blood vessels that can fuel the fat and bring oxygen and nourishment to fat cells. They can't grow. The more, the more higher glycemic, the more obviously high glycemic carbohydrates you eat, the more insulin's produced, and those, that production, that angiogenesis promotion, promotes the growth of tumors and cancers and atherosclerotic plaque as it promotes fat storage in the body. And then the fat storage promotes more estrogen, which promotes the risk of breast cancer even further. So consider this. The glycemic load of a food isn't just how much carbohydrate is in that food or how much glucose enters the bloodstream from eating that food. Rather, it also represents how fast those calories enter the bloodstream. It has to do with time. It's how many how much glucose calories enter the blood in the first hour after eating that food. If you ate 250 calories of beans, their glycemic effects would be almost negligible because the calories enter the bloodstream so slowly over many hours, not over minutes. Did you follow that? So here we have an example of a high glycemic food like white rice or white bread. And here we have a representation of low glycemic foods, like nuts and seeds, like beans, like green vegetables, that enter the bloodstream very slowly over many hours. I call it fast food versus slow food, because when foods enter the bloodstream fast, when the calories rush in in, a few, in just a few minutes' time, they set off dopamine stimulation in the brain, turning you into food addicts, increasing cravings, and, dr and emotional drives where you can't stop thinking about that food and the high it made you feel. And you become little rats looking for donuts. <laughs> high glycemic carbohydrates are addicting, just in the same mechanism via which cocaine, opiates, and heroin are addicting. Use the same mechanism in the brain that these, that these fastly Absorbed foods are addicting, and they're linked to depression as well. And they're the, how should you say, gateway drug to drug addiction. Sugar is the gateway drug to drug addiction and leads to lack of intelligence, increased violence, inability to succeed in life, increased propensity for criminal behavior, use of drugs, and more likely to get you in prison, raised on junk food and fast food. Dangerous for society. So high glycemic load foods, like rice, white potato, and chocolate cake, which is white, right? It's white. It's just um, colored, artificial tan. I always say, you know what I say, the white of the bread, sooner you're dead. <laughs> you didn't know that one? No, oh, well, but everybody knew that one. And the medium glycemic foods, we would eat more moderately, immediate, like, like um, sweet potato, grapes, rolled oats. I don't recommend people eat much brown rice, by the way because since that consumer reports came out with arsenic contamination of brown rice. I, only, I shouldn't even tell you this, but, but because I, like, I seek out a place to get my rice, my wild rice, from a place that's real, truly wild, not made by commercial farmers, where these guys in the woods and the marshes take it down with canoes and a stick, so there's no like, commercial fertilizer, or they're not growing it on tobacco land, where they used ars or, or chicken manure that they fed arsenic antibiotics to. You know, in other words, you have to be careful, careful of your source of rice if you're eating too much rice in your diet, because it'll be contaminated. Because the brown rice, the, surf, the, the fiber of the rice, sucks up arsenic more than white rice does. Don't eat a high brown rice diet unless you absolutely are sure where you, got that, you know where you got that rice from. And then the low glycemic load foods, and you shouldn't eat a lot of those foods anyway. Right? They're, they're not low glycemic enough. 
The truly low glycemic carbohydrates are, are fruit and lentils and beans and peas and squashes and, right, and berries and nuts. Those are truly, they have the truly lowest glycemic load, not rice and potato anyway. But if we really want to look at carbohydrates and rate them on a hierarchical scale from better to, you know, from worse to better, we have to consider a few things. Yes, we have to consider the micronutrient content and the phytochemical content. And beans have in them anti -cancer, the most anti-cancer chemicals, like inositol penticus phosphate. And you know that's powerfully protective against cancer because it's 26 letters long. <laughs> Just say IP5, right? Beans are full of IP5. You don't have to remember inositol penticus phosphate. But beans have the highest micronutrient density of all those 36 nutrients. They're highest in fiber of any carbohydrate food. And they have the most resistant starch. Yes, their major carbohydrate component is slowly digestible starches, but they also have a lot of resistant starch. Resistant starch acts like a fiber. That means it's resistant to enzymatic degradation. When you eat beans, a portion of those carbohydrate calories don't pass into the bloodstream. They pass through into the toilet bowl because they can't be broken down by digestive enzymes. In fact, they're fermented by bacteria in the gut, and they're turned, the carbohydrate is turned into fat, so it increases stool fat. They're converted into fat so far down in the, the distal part of the small intestines, in the proximal part of the large intestines, that 90% of those fat calories now are lost, and you don't get them in from you, into your body. So when you see on a can of beans, or a box of beans, or a cup of beans, and it says 200 calories a cup, you know that's not really 200 calories a cup, because a lot of those, some of those calories are lost in the toilet bowl as fat, even though they weren't fat in the bean when they were, in the, when they were analyzed in the cup. Got that?